I'm Malia White, real life bosun and cast member on Bravo's Below Deck Med. Working in my industry can be very interesting. These are my stories. As you'll find out, my world is a total ship show. Welcome back to Total Ship Show Season 2. I'm Malia White. I'm Amanda Logan. And today we have a very exciting guest, someone who is a little bit my idol, Captain Kate McHugh. Welcome, Kate. Hi, ladies. How's everything going? Great. How are you? Amazing. You know, we're in Santorini today, and it's a perfect day out there. Sunshine, no clouds, just live in the med life. Oh, that's amazing. I will see you soon in the med. I'm very excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're going to be together in Barcelona, right? Yeah, well, I, well, yeah, I'm going to fly into Palma and then be cruising all that area. It's cool. Nice. So, Are you thing, allowed to say which yacht you're on? Uh, I can't, but I'm on a, okay. I'm on a 72 meter. We're both private and charter. Um, I've worked for them for about okay. two years, so, yeah. Well, if you see me, you let me know. I will, definitely. I, I see, every time I see a celebrity cruise ship, I'm like, is she there? Is she in the <laughs> wheelhouse? <laughs> yeah, I get, I get a lot of messages, and I'm on the opposite side of the world, and people are like, you're in my backyard. I'm like, that's not me, but hi. <laughs> and um, so this cruise ship, so very exciting. You just got commissioned a brand new one. Did. The most luxurious, most expensive ship of her size, $1.3 billion. And she's the largest in our celebrity fleet. So she's now the flagship and she's my brand new baby. Oh my gosh, congratulations. That must be huge for you. You. Um, you know, as a captain, this is the, the highest you can get, right? To take a new build out of the shipyard. It's, um, it's the greatest honor and it's really humbling because um, to see the ship from the time that she's being built until she's brought into service and what goes into making a ship um, successful for her launch is it's mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely. And how many years? It's I think I read somewhere it's been in the making for about two something years. The build was two years. The uh, design phase was four years. And we call her our pandemic baby because she was completely built during the time when the world was shut down. So it, it's pretty amazing that she followed a timeline and she was able to sail out in April when she was supposed to. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, and how many, so how many crew versus guests will she be able to carry? We have um, a total of 5,303 on board, of which our um, crew is about 1,350. Wow, that's, that's amazing. amazing. And how long did it take you to, like, did you have to, like, study and train this boat as they were building it? What was that process like for you? Well, I was, I was actually in her sister ship. So um, the Celebrity Edge came out in 2018 in November. I joined it in 2019. I was on board when the world shut down. And normally as a captain, we do three months on, three months off. But when COVID hit, instead of my 90 days, I ended up doing 318 days. So I was on oh um, when the world was upside down and honestly i was i was so grateful for that time one because we learned the ship inside and out i can tell you what's in every single locker um every nook every cranny and also we got to know the crew in a very different way because we went from 1200 crew down to 1075 and then we ended up with 112 crew members on board a 1.2 billion dollar ship for about eight months and, you know, we, we got to learn everything about the ship from the staterooms because the 112 of us were going and flushing the toilets and the sinks and the running the showers so that the water could flow and, you know, build up Legionella. And, um, you know, the stripes came off. We were eating together. We were interacting together. We were making our schedules. And it was, it was a really interesting time. And we got some opportunities to do things that we never would have done in service, like light up the side of the ship with our hotel director's brand new baby name um, because he made it home just in time for the birth of his first child and, you know, celebrating birthdays. And we had a wedding between two crew members that couldn't get home to Mauritius. And the one of the crew members, her dad, 
um, the, the bride, her father was the chef on one of the ships nearby at anchor to us. So the morning of the wedding, we put our tender in the, in the water. We went over, picked up her dad. And as she came down for her walk um, during the wedding, Ooh. her dad came around the corner and met her and walked her the rest of the, rest of the way. So, oh, oh my gosh. So sweet. A lot of really cool things that happened during that time. But that's where I got really familiar with this class of ship. And so the difference between Beyond and the previous ships was this one is longer. She's 21 and a half meters stretched. So she's the biggest in our fleet. Um, but uh, very similar in a lot of ways. Do you get nervous at all taking her off the dock still? Or is this, you know, like second nature to you nowadays? You know what I say is the day that I don't get nervous is the day I need to retire. Yeah. Because I feel if you're not thinking about it so much that you've become complacent and that's not where you want to be when you have 5,000 lives on board your ship. So I always um, get a little bit of butterflies. I was trained by Scandinavians when I was at Royal Caribbean and they used to call it the Norwegian ice and you would wait until that ice, you know, kind of burns your gut. Um, but I, I think if you're not nervous, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Um, so I obviously I'm really interested in how you got to where you are obviously a lot of hard work and I know you went to a Maritime Academy so is this you kind of knew this is what you wanted to do because you know for me and in yachting I didn't know about this whole world until about five years ago and now I'm like there's so many opportunities that I'd love to share with other little girls who didn't know that this is a you know a possibility and it's the greatest job in the world to go to see, um, to, to travel the world and meet incredible people and see these places. And you really realize how much you don't know about life until you travel. And then you get that bug and, and you can't help it. And that's where it started for me. I went on a cruise when I was 12 years old. And I told my parents when we got off the ship, I said, I know what I want to be when I grow up. And my dad said, what's that? I said, do you know the person that plans all the fun events on board the ship? dad said the cruise director I said yeah I want to be the cruise director he's like well you can do that or you can drive the thing um, and kind of anything's a possibility and the secret is my dad had wanted to go to sea but he went into the Peace Corps where he met my mom in Ethiopia and when he came back and they got married and he applied to California Maritime Academy they told him he was too old so he kind of filed that dream in the back of his brain and then when I expressed an interest he was like you know what if you want to go to this school, this is, you know, how you can have a career like this. And that basically got my foot in the door. So I went to California Maritime Academy for four years. When I graduated, knowing I wanted to be on cruise ships, I applied to every cruise line in the industry. And after a year and a half, I wasn't hearing anything back. And this was right when emails were a newfangled thing. So I was sending out actual resumes. Um, in the mail and emails and still nothing. So I changed my resume and I applied to be a bartender with Disney Cruise Line. And Disney Cruise Line, they took the resume, they looked at it and they go, well, she's not qualified to be a bartender because I'd never served a drink a day in my <laughs> life. But she's qualified to drive our ships, go figure. So they got my resume to the proper people and I got hired, I got my foot in the door with Disney as a third officer. So an entry level position on the bridge, assisting the officer of the watch, and um, unfortunately, there were only two ships at the time, the Magic and the Wonder. They weren't building any other ships, so there wasn't a lot of room for growth. And someone that I knew um, at another company, they were saying, everyone's moving up very quickly because we're building more ships. And that was Royal Caribbean. So I applied with Royal. I got hired as a second officer. I spent 13 years there from second officer, first officer deck, first officer navigation, first officer safety, chief officer safety, staff captain. And then in 2015, I was sailing with my husband. He was chief engineer on um, one of Royal ships. I was sailing as a guest and we were off the coast of Oman when our president and CEO from Celebrity called and she said, you know, would you come over to Celebrity as our first female American captain? And I said, hell yeah, I'll be right there. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> what an incredible story. And like, that's amazing. And did you meet your husband in the industry or like, have you guys known each other for a long time or? 
we have we're, this year we'll celebrate 16 years and um the very first date i remember you know there's certain people in your life where we, the day that you meet them or the moment that you meet them, you remember everything about it. I remember what he was wearing, what I was wearing, how we stood, the exact conversation and the words that we used. Our very first date, he asked me to meet him. I was first officer and he was the staff chief engineer. He asked me to meet him on the top deck by the kids club in my boiler suit at midnight when I got off watch. And I mean, that sounds super dodgy, right? Like, okay. <laughs> and I was all so I go running up to the top deck and um, he had me climb up the ship stack. And when I got to the top, he blindfolded me and had me slide down the stained glass windows of the chapel. And on that top does of sound the dodgy. Chapel, right? He had taped down a blanket. There were strawberries. There was some champagne. And it was under the Caribbean stars. Down below on the deck, they were having um, dancing under the stars for the guests. So we had the music. And that was our first date. But I tell everybody, when you set the bar quite literally that high, everything after that is like. Yeah, <laughs> like I was going to say, that's an amazing mistake. first date, <laughs> especially while you're on yeah. the ship and like working like he actually put some time into that and effort like, well, well done. Yeah. Wow, that is amazing. And congratulations on 16 years. That's yeah. that's so cool. This is well, this is. It's what we know, you know, people are like, how do you make long distance work? And I say the secret to a happy marriage is 12 time zones. <laughs> like when he's in the Caribbean and I'm in Australia, it's, you know, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. is kind of our, our connect time. And things have changed so much since I started sailing um, in 96 because we used to send telex messages and it, it was like it $7 a word. Um, it's always right now when I get the, the doorbell ringing. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I think I've got packages coming today. It's very exciting for us. <laughs> I think I've got mail. Um, but yeah, we, you know, so we now we connect with um, Skype and Facebook and, um, you know, social media and everything. So, so you guys are on different, on different uh, vessels or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He actually works for a different company now. So, oh, okay. um, we found when we sailed together, we didn't spend as much time as we do when we're not sailing together. And um, now he's more land-based, so he likes to come on and sail as the captain's wife. And he's so funny because a chief engineer is not historically like a very outgoing and vivacious personality. They'd much rather be, you know, downstairs with all those horses. But my chief, he when he's on board, he just blossoms. He becomes a social butterfly. And he walks around and tells people, do you know who I am? And people are like, we don't care who you are. <laughs> yeah, but he's, I, he's really good about it. I love it. I was wondering, because I'm also, you know, I currently am dating the chief engineer of my vessel. And he's so <laughs> introverted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he's such an introvert. And, like, engineers are just bred a different way, you know. But he's... So supportive of me yes. in my position, and he can't wait for me to become a captain. So it's, I was wondering if it's this like he looks like he's an amazing supportive husband. That's like yes, this is the captain, and you know, he's like your and biggest. And the cool man. thing about dating a chief engineer because you know usually there's the deck and engine, deck versus engine. Yeah. But honestly, I maneuver the way that I do because when I was learning. My husband used to take the time to come up, and if I used too many RPMs on a maneuver that weren't necessary, like he would slap my hand and say, why'd you do that? So I maneuver in a very soft way, and that's thanks to him and kind of giving me insight in, um, you know, propulsion and what to do with the power and how to use it properly. Yeah. I, I would, Different perspective. Yeah, I look at it as like you have the best person in your corner. Like to have the chief engineer kind of as your ally and in your corner, that's, you know, that's the best wingman you can get. <laughs> Absolutely. Dynamic duo. Yeah. Um, and so then obviously, you know, in yachting, we, uh, yachting is quite different from the cruise ship world. Um, but I kind of want to know how different it is because I've never stepped, have you never worked on yachts, correct? I have not, no. no. And uh, so in your industry, how has it been like the male-female dynamic, especially becoming one of the first American female like cruise ship captains? And was it rough at times? 
You know, I, I love this question because when I was promoted in 2015, that was the number one question that I was asked. And um, honestly, someone was asking about all of the challenges and can you tell us the horror stories being such a minority? And I was scratching my head and I was like, you know, I, I can't think of anything in particular that comes to mind. And um, <laughs> there's food too. Hi, Putsu. <laughs> wait, wait, Putsu, come here and say hi. Come say hi really quick. This is Putsu. takes care of my room. Come down, come down. There he is. Hi, um, hi. <laughs> I love it. Putsu looks after me and Bob, so um, <laughs> so we're well taken care of. He's making sure That's you're well I fed. <laughs> yes. Yes, he's he's taking care of everything. I can't do anything without food. Um, but one day I was standing on stage and I was addressing um, the 850 crew members that I had on board that ship at the time. And I looked out into the audience and I realized that we're all a minority of some sort, whether it be race, religion, cultural background, sexual orientation, gender, whatever. And because cruise ships are such a unique environment, I mean, we have 73 different nationalities yeah. on board this ship. And when you have that kind of environment, we don't pick on those differences, we celebrate them. So honestly, coming up through the ranks, I never felt like I was a female officer. I was an officer. And um, what's interesting is today is, how did, what? IMO made today International Day of the Female Seafarer, I think is the is the title. And a lot of people say, well, how do you feel about that? I, I don't think we need a day. And today I decided it's the day that I'm not going to refer anymore to being a female captain. Yeah. I'm just going to be captain. Okay. Because as soon as we attach this female captain, we're creating a bias. That doesn't need to be there because what we're trying to do is make it a blanket where it has nothing to do with our gender. So that's kind of what I've committed to today being International Day of the Female Seafarer. I couldn't agree more. Like when I'm reading through the textbooks and stuff and it's like he, the captain, or like it's a lot of it is he, 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 you know, or she. And it's like, just say the captain or the officer. You're yeah. an officer, I'm yeah. a bosun, you know, it doesn't matter for men or female or whatever else. We're just, that's our job title. You wouldn't be like, yep. ah, the female CEO of the company. It's, she's the CEO. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That is exactly. So that's good to hear, though, that you haven't had too many, you know, div I also share that same, like, I haven't had too many difficulties, you know, being a woman in sort of a male dominated industry, but I also think it's because it's turning a bit. I know I think it's you know, it's becoming a little more equal in that sense. Mm -hmm. And and you know, I have to thank you because social media is a huge thing. You mentioned earlier, um, you know, that you didn't see any of this when you were growing up. Same for me. I didn't see anything except for the love boat. That's what I had as an attachment to cruise ships. And social media is such an amazing tool. The people that we connect with that, you know, garner interest and come into this this career path because they've seen something on social media. And honestly, when I started, I came into a brand new company. It was new company, new ship, new people, and a new job. I came in as captain. And nobody knew me from Adam. Um, and the spotlight that was put on that position was overwhelming. Um, and I was getting interview requests and I was getting all of this external attention. And all I wanted to do was do my job and do it well because I was under such a microscope. And so I asked initially, can I step away from the spotlight? Can I just focus on my job? I don't want to do these interviews. I don't want to do all this. But as soon as I did that, what I realized is I was getting asked by the guest and the crew the same questions that I was getting asked in interviews. And that's when I realized I've been given a platform yeah. to normalize a woman in this position. And it is my responsibility. And honestly, it's everyone's responsibility. If we step back and we say, it's not my, somebody else will do it. Well, we've just wasted an opportunity. Yeah. to make it easier for the next ones that are coming up so that they don't have to hear. You know, um, I understand when people say they're proud. That's that's nice to hear. Um, 
but I also really want it normal. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and to use our platforms and things to share that message and you know, kind of make it equal. And for everyone, not just females, make it better for everybody. Because, you know, I the same, we've got crew from so many different walks of life and we all come from different places. So it's to make it an industry better for just everyone, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Amanda is going to kill us if we don't ask you about Bug. I need to see Bug. I am, <laughs> I am like the proudest cat lady on the planet and I follow Bug on Instagram <laughs> and love, oh my gosh, just so precious. Can you, can you say hi? <gasps> yeah. Can you oh say good morning? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so is Bug, is Bug a boy or a girl? Bug is a girl, oh, girl. Lady okay. Bug Naked. Lady That's her Bug. Full, okay. full name. And how old is she? she She's six years old, and she's been sailing with me since she was three months old. Oh my um, God. And the reason that I got a pet is because um, the other captains in our fleet, they'll have their wives and their kids come sail with them. But my husband working on ships, he couldn't come be with me all the time. So yeah. it can get very lonely because yeah. you are like the CEO on board. So I asked if I could have a pet to our shoreside office and their initial reaction was no, absolutely not. And I said, well, Captain Johnny on Royal Caribbean, he has a parrot. I worked with another captain that had two cats before. And they said, okay, well, what would you like? And I said, well, I want a monkey. And they said, no, <laughs> <laughs> try again. I even had a, a monkey lined up because we were calling St. Kitts like every other week. And um, the gentleman that was doing our port state inspections, he's like, you want a monkey? I can get you a monkey. That's There's 52,000 so... monkeys on the island. No oh problem. Oh, my gosh. That's so But funny. the office wasn't keen on that. So um, I was scrolling through Instagram, and I came across hairless cats, sphinx cats. And yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated. And, um, and then I found Bug. So oh, my gosh. They really are. I always don't... travel. I think they're so cute and my I have two kitties and they're both six and I call them my girls too and I just I am obsessed with them yeah. like I don't know what I do without them and Bug is so cute. She's Officer Bug isn't she because she's always in the bridge. She's the Admiral. Admiral. Let's be honest she's she's running the whole show. I love it. <laughs> well and Captain Kate she's so chill like she just is such a mellow like I see you and you just carry her around and like when you're in the bridge working like she's just sitting there how is she so chill? She's always been around people her whole life. And my office right now, it's attached to the bridge. And I always leave the door open so she can come and go. So she's always around people. Yeah. And um, she loves the guest. She's got her uh, buggy around here, too. So we'll, out, we'll go out for walks. Um, we do bug trivia with the guest. And the guest can win some cool bug prizes. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, she's kind of, she's way more popular than I am. People don't want to meet the captain. They want to meet the cat. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> I love her. I think she is so precious and so sweet. <laughs> Well, Captain Kate, we know you are a very busy woman, so we don't want to keep you too long, but um, we are wearing our red bottoms in support of you today. Yes. Um, <laughs> I just admire everything that you're doing. You know. Woo. Yes, there they are, the famous <laughs> red bottoms. <laughs> Wait, really quick, where did that come about? Was it just your thing? You know, when, when you get promoted to captain, um, all of the other male captains, my mentors, I remember them buying watches cars. Um, all I wanted was a pair of shoes. So I bought my first pair of Louboutins um, because I thought, you know, I need a, a nice pair of black patent leather um, shoes. But because I was the first in my company, it's nice being the first in the way that you can kind of write your own rule book. So I brought these shoes on and um, they've kind of set off a bit of a domino effect. Now I have some of my bridge officers, they're rocking the red bottoms too, and it kind of just became a thing. But you know, good shoes, when you spend money on good shoes, they're gonna last. And my <laughs> my patent leather that I've got from my first contract when 2015, still the same ones that I'm rocking. So you get what you pay for, and um, it's just kind of become my thing. Even my, even my, uh, my stationery has 
red bottoms on oh, it. Yeah, I saw that. I love that. Well, it's becoming Malia's thing too. She loves them too. Newfound yeah. love. Well, I for love them. you, and I was like, that's so badass. She's wearing red bottoms in the bridge, yeah. and I'm I'm about to take my uh, oral exam for my chief mate's ticket, and I was like, you know what? I need a good pair of shoes for that, and I want to harness like my energy. Yeah. And Kate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I love it. Well, c congratulations, and I know you're gonna just kill it. Thank you're you. gonna just ace it. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for talking with us today. Yeah. Um, keep crushing it out there. You have a lot of people looking up to you, and uh, yeah, I just can't wait to see what you do. <laughs> Thanks, Captain Kate. So nice thank to you. meet you. Thank you. And Bug. Bye, Bug. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Captain. See you next time.